Hi there. Today we are going to talk about The Ferryman by Justin Cronin. At first it started off a little bit slow. I would say about halfway into it, I was pretty hooked. The whole concept was, oh, I can't even say because it's such a spoiler. Farts. There's this whole continent or land that these people live on. It's called Prospera. And there's these three islands and they're kind of surrounded by water and it's away from everything. It's separate from the rest of the world kind of, but it's still in the world. Prospera is this very rich place that is full of very wealthy people. They have assistants and servants and all that stuff. And you know, they go to the opera and they drink fine wine and have lobster for dinner. And then on this other island is the annex. And that is where like all the worker people work. They live a much different life. Their wages aren't that great. They work really hard. Stuff in life is not all sunshine and rainbows as it appears to be over in Prospera. The people over in the Annex are not very happy with the people in Prospera. And Prospera is this interesting place too, where basically you live a very long life and you have a reader that tells like what your health is at. It like gives statistics, like a little computer thing that's built into your arm. And at some point when your reader starts to get low and people start to become a little out there and maybe the brain's not what it all used to be, they are taken over by this ferryman. Enter Proctor Bennett, who is the ferryman, and he takes them over to this place called the nursery where they are reintegrated. Basically, they, they go to die, but they don't die. They are reborn, and they are reborn as like a teenager, and all their memories are wiped, and then they, they start a whole new life. And the way marriage goes in this, like there's contracts, like you can sign a five year contract or a 15 year or that part of the book. I was like, they should do that in reality because some people who get married <laughs> shouldn't be married. And if they had like a five year contract, they could be like, oh, well, our contract's almost up. We're not going to renew. And then you don't have to go through all that BS in court. And also these people, I guess, are sterile. They don't have children. So they adopt what are called wards. A ward is comes into existence at, a, at around the age of like 16. If the family decides that they want a child, they adopt one and they're pretty much kind of grown, but they still, you know, they go through adolescent stuff and all that. And so the beginning of the story starts out with this couple that adopts their ward and their ward is Proctor Bennett and Bennett grows up and he becomes a ferryman for his trade. It's a very interesting trade or job because he takes people over to this island when they're going to die, but in a different way to be reborn. And just the way that they react and behave as this happens. Sometimes though, like the people or the Prosperans have these weird like echoes of memories where maybe they are drawn to people that they knew formerly in former reiterations, which they're not supposedly supposed to have. And also a thing about Proctor Bennett too, is he dreams. And these people aren't supposed to dream. That's not supposed to be a thing. So when he's younger, he goes to this doctor to be checked out for it. And they, nothing much really came of it. They're like, oh, he'll probably grow out of it. Da, 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 da. And so he never did. But then he just wouldn't mention that he dreamed. He didn't really talk about it so that people, you know, didn't think he was weird. He didn't want to be sent back to be like reintegrated or whatever because they think something's wrong with him. Yeah, weird stuff starts happening. Like his wife will just like, zone out and stare off into space like she's somewhere else and then he'll get these weird memories he, he has some things where that happen that are just really effed up and he starts to like question his reality and just stuff gets really weird and then so you have you know as i said before the prosperans and then the people of the annex who are basically like the working class and the working class is starting to get very unhappy. They started like a work slowdown. They're not all happy and joyful to be like, what do you need? And this, that, and the other for the, these wealthy people. And they're starting to show signs that they might be wanting to revolt. We have just this whole weird way of life that exists. Oh, and the people of the annex, I forgot to mention, those people are born like normal people. The kids, are born as you know children they're not born as 16 year olds 
it's a hard life for a lot of them. When the Prosperans, people from Prospero, run into the people of the Annex, you can really feel the tension and the hatred towards them. When Proctor Bennett, when his reality starts to seem kind of unreality and things are happening that are really strange, he starts to question it and dive deeper into trying to figure this out. And then he has a few people that come into his life that, he, that start to uh, open his eyes a little bit more too. And this story was really gripping and it was such a crazy, out there, wild dream. <laughs> do androids dream of electric sheep? I don't know. What do you do when your reality is not the reality that you think it is? And what happens when you dig deeper? Obviously, there will be people who try to prevent you from digging deeper. So red flags go up and uh, stuff ensues. I, I guess I would categorize it more as a sci-fi. I gave this book five stars. I, I really liked the characters. I liked the world building. The world building was wild. There was some stuff that didn't make any sense, but that didn't, it makes sense later. <laughs> In the beginning, you're like, what the crap is this? And then later you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. It was well-written, fun to read. It's on the longer side, but it was a digital book. So I honestly don't know how many pages it was. I think it took me three days to read it. And I read for several hours each day. So I think this is a big one. And if you are interested in this book, I'll have a link down below. It is an affiliate link. So a little bit goes to the channel and it also goes to support indie bookstores. If you like fantasy or sci-fi, the next video coming up will be a fantasy slash sci-fi video. If you had fun hanging out, boop that like button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff, weird stuff, weird stuff.